Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. I'm here with Mr. Joe Hollywood to my right. How's it going? Getting ready to uh, to kick off our second interview for the show, um, which is just awesome. I'm very excited uh, to bring back uh, our next guest, uh, whose cigars I also like to smoke as well, especially 1502 XO which is uh, just a phenomenal blend. Enrique Sanchez is here from Global Premium Cigars. Enrique, welcome back to the Stogie Geeks. Hi, how you doing, guys? Thank you for having me back. It's always good to be back. Yeah, it's always nice to have you on the show. You're always so excited about everything. I love it. Your energy <laughs> is awesome, Enrique. Um, I, I, I'm excited. I like the 1502 uh, XO. Uh, I don't think we want to recap, I think, for our listeners I haven't smoked that cigar in some time, and I was like, wow, I need to get my hand. When I, I saw your name come up on the list to be on the show, I'm like, I need to get a hold of those cigars again. I'm like, that was a really awesome smoke. Um, it, what, what makes that smoke so special, Enrique? Well, it's, uh, it's uh, my master blend so far, so it's uh, my masterpiece. So it's very tough one to make, uh, especially when you, you're using 18-year-old tobacco in, in that blend. You know, it's a premium, premium tobacco in which it has been sitting down for 18 years, and, and now you're able to show it to the world what's the greatness of it. I mean, how can you be that one? It's beautiful, as you say it. It's the first uh, com uh, great complexity and, and a strain, a flavor, everything combined in one. That's awesome. Joe, questions for uh, Enrique along those lines? I, I do. I mean, I'm going back to uh, when I was first introduced to 1502. Uh, definitely uh, it, it th thoroughly enjoyed the full line. Uh, I'm thinking the red label. Is that the ruby off the top of my head? Yeah. Ruby. The ruby stuck out. Uh, I remember uh, Friday nights doing ruby with some red wine often. Uh, great, great blend. Uh Oh, I, I it was it was one of my go tos for sure for a while, you know. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that blend. Ruby, Ruby. Uh, when I blend that, I need a, uh, my after lunch cigar. That cigar is perfect after a good uh, uh, lunch meal. Okay. And and that's how, how I created the, the Ruby. It has a medium medium uh, has a medium plus body and strength. Uh, great complexity, good flavor everywhere. Uh, you get uh, a, a, it was a habano from Ecuador as a wrapper, and then a, you get a, a vinyl long filler from Nicaragua. So it's a great combination. Remember that when, when I use a non a Nicaraguan tobacco, I always make sure to use only ninety percent of our of our of our, of our blend and from Nicaragua. The only ten percent is for somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So in this case, in this blend, it was from Ecuador, in habano Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Have you had it with red wine? <laughs> yes, well, of course. <laughs> Actually, uh, it was a Friday night. Uh, it was sorry, Saturday night. We had a, a get together here with, uh, with cousins of mine. They would come. They came into the house, and, and of course, we ended up with a bottle of wine. And I that was smoking a fifteen two ruby, of course. See, see, I I love it. it, it you have I, I can see that, that combo. Well it's it's red, amazing. Red it's wine, like yeah. it complements each other, especially red. especially yeah. of, red. You can like go a, wrong. Especially like a red Cabernet wine. It's just so heavy mm -hmm. on the body, yeah. and it's so heavy on the smoke. It's so good. We're going to have to pair that up. We should. We what should pairs definitely. well with this uh, 1502 Lancero? This new XO Ooh. Lancero, or, or, or this, re, this reblended uh, limited release Lancero. How limited is limited? <laughs> well, it's a couple hundred boxes. A uh, hundred boxes, that's it. I mean, that's... Uh, uh, the problem with the with the 18-year-old tobacco is that it's either you have it today or you don't have it at all. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it, it's one it's why it's, that's why it's limited. It's not that we don't want to produce more. We wish to have more, but there's there, there's no more to, to to look for it. And then we have to wait for the next year and we, we come out with more production. Uh, right now, actually, I do enjoy the the, the XO Lance, Lancero, uh, and I'm pairing it with uh, cappuccino. There you go. So it, it does it goes uh, hand by hand. Uh, by spirits, I definitely am more into scotch uh, type of guy. I do enjoy rum as well, good cognac. So in, the, in that variety, you have a lot to choose from uh, where, where to go for the, the 1502 XO in general, especially in Lancero, if you can find it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now when you uh, it take a blend that's uh, not a Lancero and you turn that into a Lancero, what are some of the challenges and issues that you run into? 
Well, I mean, Lancero is one of the hardest uh, 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 vitolas to make because you don't have a lot of space to work. It. You don't have a lot of space to put uh, as many uh, uh, tobacco in, in, in that vitola. Uh, if you're using uh, uh, four, five, or higher a, a number of, of different uh, uh, tobacco, then it gets a little more complicated because nobody has the, 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 the preference or, or, or no one has the, the space to actually work in that. So uh, uh, in, in, in the factory when uh, 52 cigars are being manufactured, uh, there are uh, four bocheros in which they use, they, they make my lanceros and they make my coronas. Uh, they are the most specific, especially when you do a lancero and then you semi box press it, mm. which is even tougher. And uh, uh, you still have a perfect draw, a, uh, a beautiful uh, a shape, everything perfect as it should be. It's, it's a really tough way. Yeah, I, I can see that being particularly challenging because typically in a box press, you don't put as much of the filler tobacco so that you can then press it down and still have it draw. So, like, you really challenged yourself. Like, not only am I going to Lancero, but then I'm going to box press it, which gives you even less flexibility as to how much tobacco you yeah. put in there, right? Yes, indeed, indeed. That's uh, one of the things. In a normal a Lancero, it starts with a uh, 38 ring gate. Uh, we normally, in my Lancero, we use a... Uh, 40. So when we box press it, it goes more like a 38, but it, it, it has the same size, but it, but with the complexity in the box press. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's really awesome. And and so this is one you've just uh, released and announced uh, to the market? Yes, today. Fantastic. We did release it in, in IPCPR two years ago, uh, but it was a very tiny, small batch. Uh, so now we did, uh, came out with our uh, next production and it's hitting the market. Uh, last week we did launch the newsletters to the retailers so they can start uh, ordering and, uh, and letting them know that this week we'll be doing that, the, uh, our letting the general market to know about it. So uh, most of them already had the, the, the orders in the way. It's um, and they're still working in the orders. So uh, most likely they're going to be run out a couple more days and then we'll be next year. Now, what's interesting from a, a business perspective, and, and I see this in the, the security business that I'm in as well, is that when there's a big trade show, everyone tries to get their announcements in surrounding the trade show, right? Some are like just, just before the trade show, some are at the trade show, some maybe follow just, just after. Um, your release comes much earlier. I think there's still a lot of manufacturers that aren't ready to talk about what they're releasing at the show. But here we are today talking about, you know, your new release. Was that a strategy that you had kind of employed? Uh, it's one that I've employed uh, actually in security is that when there's a lull because uh, everyone's waiting, you make your announcement and you kind of stand out. I don't know if that would be a strategy. I, I think a lot of things we do here is, is we do basically another lock. Uh, it's, uh, we do release something when, when it's ready. We take our time to make sure everything's quite ready. And we de, we do re, uh, uh, once it's ready, we do release it to the market. So uh, I don't know about it's, it's try as it's itself, but uh, it's more as that the tobacco is ready to 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 enjoy. Right. Yeah, it's very different from software, which is just released. Well, we won't get into that. But <laughs> not always when it's ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, no, that's great. That's great. I'm excited to uh, to smoke the cigar. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the blend? I know we talked about the last time you were on the show, but remind our listeners uh, as much as you want to or, or care to disclose about, about the blend. Well, uh, out of the six of the line, uh, or 52 cigars we have, this is the only one which do not give much information about the blend itself. The only thing I can tell you is, like I said before, 90% is Nicaraguan tobacco, and we use something else for, uh, for all the country. And it's not Cuba. You know, a lot of people said you know, there's, the, there's some tobacco from a country that we cannot mention. It's like, yeah, well, they're referring to Cuba. This, is not, this is that have, does not have any Havana. So that's like, have to, we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, I think it's refreshing in our industry today that whether it's disclosed or not, I, that bothers some people. It doesn't really bother me. Mm. Um, but with, you, blenders today have access to tobaccos from all kinds of different countries, I think even more so uh, than mm. before. And you end up with some of these unique... Uh, blends like that and now did you try tobaccos from different countries and do you agree with the statement that we have a lot more to choose from today and those are making their way into uh, cigars that, that we're smoking now oh indeed I mean that's uh, I said that 
today is like the renaissance of cigars. It was all the tobacco, was the, all the quality tobacco that you have today compared uh, 15, 20 years uh, uh, and, and back. I mean, it's, it's nowhere to compare it. Uh, for this blend, it actually, it took me over three years to perfection it. Just to give you an idea, it, w it was not that easy. Uh, actually, in, in Saturday, when I was here, I was trying a, a one of the first prototypes of this blend. And it, it was really good, not as good as uh, uh, it, is, it is today, but it was a long, long, long period of trying and error. Especially when I do with the blending, I take a lot more time because uh, a lot of, uh, I see that, uh, uh, and I believe it's a mistake when people go to Nicaragua or, or Dominican to blend, they go to the blending room, they get, they get a, a guy sitting down making, rolling the cigar for you, and you, you putting all the different tobacco all put together, now put this, this put this, blah, blah, blah. but the cigar, the cigar is not ready to, to, to actually enjoy it because it's, it's too humid, uh, the tobacco is not, it's not uh, the, 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 the tobacco between each other has not get marriage, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that happens in the aging room. And, and they try and they make decisions right away. In my case, when I do the blending, I know what I want. I know how to put things together. I send the information to the, to, to the factory. They put it together for me. They tell, I tell them do that, uh, 10 varieties. I do blend, always I blend in, in total size. That's for me, it's, it's the, 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 my best Vitola to blend. And then once it's ready, either I send it to, uh, to Miami or I go back to Nicaragua. Uh, that's six months at least, and then I try them, see what I uh, put my notes, I see what I think, and I start doing uh, uh, the modifications is needed. But w once uh, that, that next prototype goes along, you have to wait another uh, six months. So for me, making a blend it takes a long time because I like to experience how it's gonna. I don't want to be guessing how it's gonna taste, and I know there's a lot a uh, very very. Uh, knowledgeable blenders in which they, they, they by try, uh, trying the cigar right now or just trying the, 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 the tobacco in the field, they will know how it's going to taste five years from now. I don't have the luxury of that experience. Remember, my, pa my, my parents were now in this industry and I like many, many other uh, uh, people in this industry. So I, have to, I like to explain that on myself. I like to take the time to do it. And besides, uh, when I do this, I feel more like the, the artistic part. It's the only way to find out if, you, if it's gonna be good or bad, it's for you to try it. And right. you have to be patient. I know. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so do those 18 year old tobaccos become 19 year old and, and 20 year old, like when you go through the, the process? So are the tobacco is actually older than, than what we've discussed so far? When we roll the, 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 the tobacco, the, the 15 to XO, mm. that tobacco is 18. Now, to be able to do that, and that was the easy, the easy part, anybody can come out with a good blend once. Yeah. Duplicate it in time. That's when it gets tricky, and that's when it, it gets a lot more excited. So, okay, yeah, great. So we have 18 uh, tobacco. We can we can do uh, 10,000 cigars. Great, perfect. What happened next time? Mm. Next year mm. when that batch goes. So if we're able to do that, we had to have the 17, mm -hmm. the 16, the 15. So when this batch goes, the next one works in 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 in, 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 in the channel, and and that goes on and on and on for the rest of, of the of the production. But that's easy. It's a, that's even easier when you use one type of tobacco. But we use uh, uh, actually five type of tobacco, including the wrapping, which is not 18. It's the only thing is not 18. Hmm. But uh, 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 the other the other four in which they're 18 year old tobacco, you don't have that much space to work with. It's right. what you got. It's in, in, in the moment. And we were very uh, lucky to actually put our hands in the type of tobacco. Now, what's interesting, and, and Joe and I were talking about this, that the uh, the wine industry does it very differently in that they spec uh, they uh, label and specify the vintage like this was this mm -hmm. year the, of, of this crop and then they they change the year as it goes in cigars some some people do it that way or, or have had projects that have done it you know that way um, mm -hmm. but many in cigars today will do what you're describing right the crop rotates every year and you're calling it the same thing and it's not it's not a vintage. It, what are the, the pros and cons to the way the wine industry does it versus cigars? And why do most cigar manufacturers try to keep that consistency uh, from the same crop from year to year? Well, first of all, I think you, you're comparing apples to, to, to orange in, in this aspect. <laughs> yeah, because tobacco it, to grapes, it, right? If, if you want to compare, <laughs> to... more likely, go more to, to a scotch, for mm -hmm. example. That's when you have something blended. Blended scotch, not a, 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 I call it a, a single, single malt. malt, right? Yeah. Blended scotch, a, a flirt, a, like, let's, let's take for example, Jordan Walker Black. 
Johnny Walker Black, when he, when he comes along, it's a, it's a blending in scotch, in which is, uh, as a 12 years, is the youngest of what they have to blend for, to be able to put the, the year in, in the bottle. And so every time they, they, had, they had to come up with a production, they had to reblend it because the rough material changes. Like you were said, it, mm-hmm. it's, it had more sun, it, 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 they rain more, it was more dry, all that has affect the rough material itself. So when you come, I mean, you want to apply the same formula from one year to another, most likely it's going to be a slight different in flavor and in strain and many other characteristics in, in, in the product. Exactly the same happens with, uh, with, with cigars. All our cigars, they're, they're, they're not a, a pure for one region. They are blended. They have tobacco from this area, tobacco from that area, with tobacco from that farm, tobacco from that farm, and they all blend together as one. So that rough material changes in time. So what we do is every time we have to come up with a production, sometimes we have to reblend it. We have to, we have to twist a little bit to make the control has to be. So it, it, it's, it's, it's not a, a, the easy part or, 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 uh, in that. It's, you know, that's why you have to have a great master blenders in which they know how that is affecting uh, uh, the, the, the characteristics of the weather is affecting today, how that is going to uh, look for uh, three, five, eight years or 10 years or 18 years. Mm-hmm. So that is, 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 a, is a lot of work in, in, the, in the blending process. Not only creating a cigar for one, as I said. No, you have to think about every year. Yeah. No, that's, that's awesome. He's... My first original question, and you started to answer it, and then you, you got a little animated. I like it because I'm animated too, so, <laughs> so it's going to be a great interview. But, uh, you know, when you say that you want to wait till it's right, is this uh, – I want to talk about the, your concept of, of right. Uh, is this a taste profile that you're feeling? Is it something that you had in your head and you say, okay, this is not right, but this is what's going to make it right? Like, can you just – narrow in right if you could does that make great, sense great right? question. that question great makes question. sense yeah, yeah, you question. know <laughs> it, 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 you, you, t- you throw me the hardest question that it is in blending that, uh, that's, that's i'm not like done a, yet uh, sir. Uh, 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 i'm not done it's a two-part you know, question how, how do you know it's the, the paint is right <laughs> right right mm. it's something uh when i have a blend i know what i want mm-hmm. i i can i can see it through to, 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 to my head I cannot taste it, I cannot, I cannot smell it, I cannot anything. And that's finding all those characteristics to, 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 to able to do that. That's the beauty of, of the part of the blending part. But I know what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. I mean, for, for, yeah, I mean, let's go back to the XO, for example. Uh, over three years of making the process, uh, I don't know how many prototypes we have created, and, and, and sometimes we have to throw everything away and it starts it start, it start from scratch again until we get it right. The people in, in, in the factory were like, Enrique, this is it. We cannot do it anymore. No, <laughs> yes, we can. We started pushing and pushing to the limit. And to they own, when they tried it, they were like, oh, my God. Like, that is exactly what we were looking for. You guys didn't see it. because I mean, nobody, no, no, I, couldn't, I couldn't get it. But now we were to get it. We found it. And that's the beauty of it. Remember, in the blenders, there are two types of blenders. And that might be one of your, your, your next question, but let me, let me go forward in this one. <laughs> There's the, the blender in which is the more, uh, is the, I call it the blend for a specific market. They say, okay, I'm going to make a cigar from Mexico. And we, we know the Mexico like a little bit more spice. So, you know, they're going to look for something in, in the tobacco in which it gives you that little spice in, in the tobacco. So they, uh, they, they do something specific for a specific market at itself. Normally, those blenders are, are very knowledgeable. They even know that, that, that type of soil, the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, how many hours of, of, of rain uh, or light, uh, everything happens every year, and they have the statistics and everything. But those blenders, they blend for market specific. They're all blenders, and I would like to call them, I would like to call them, uh, I said that artistic blenders, in which we blend for of what we want, what we're looking for, something that's not out there. We don't blend for the market. We blame for ourselves and hope for the market to actually enjoy what we create. And that's, uh, that's, that, that would be more my part of that. It's like finding those things in which have not been there, but I know it's going to give you uh, uh, that moment to enjoy life even better. That's more, more, more what we're always looking for. Mm-hmm. So other than making it right, my second part of the question is, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned from your line of work? <sighs> Is that is, oh, every day it's a new learning. You, <laughs> that, this industry, you never stop learning. It, it's always something new. It's, it's, it's incredible. Once you think, oh, yeah, I, that's my mind. No, you don't. 
and like hey, let's go back to square one yeah. <laughs> you have to be very humble you have to be very thankful for for uh, all the uh, all the 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 components that you get to work with uh remember and always put example in blending it's just about uh, uh, being a chef uh, how many great how many chefs are in the world just give me i don't know do you, do you have any number of that what was chefs chefs in the world yeah. how many chefs Good yeah. chefs, or there's probably yeah, well. <laughs> right, right. I know, I know where you're going okay. with that. Yeah, okay, yeah. But you say great because I'm a, a good chef. Now, what's make one chef better than the other? They all had the same ingredients. Sure. Uh, they all had the same salt. They all had the, 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 the same, same rough materials, and it's what they can do with what exactly what they have to combine it to make it greater or some other not that great. Mm -hmm. That. It, it, no, no chef in the world has the, spe the, the, the special salt, the, uh, the magical uh, uh, spice that is going to create their food uh, out, out of this world. No, they work with what they have and put it together and create something great when everybody had the same ability to do it, but they couldn't make it. That's what makes uh, things great. And that's exactly the same that happens in, in, in tobacco. We all have the, almost the same uh, raw material, same the, the same tobacco. We all, uh, there's almost a second, almost identical techniques of how to roll a cigar, how to do this, how to do some better, uh, more efficient than others. But in the end, how you can combine all those together and create something, wow. When you try it, that is what makes a difference. How crazy do you drive your rollers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can, can you no, imagine them not, in the factory? Let's, let's he'd, be like, go, he'd be like, "Well, not it's not right. It's not right." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell us a story. Uh, Tell you know, us one I, of those I guess stories. It's, it's a love-hate relationship. <laughs> sure. <laughs> some they love me to death. Some they want to kill me. Yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. No, I can I can see where where that you know where you you'd be in the middle of the factory and, and driving them. A little bit crazy, you know, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, don't don't tell that to them. I won't. I, do. <laughs> I, I won't. I won't. I won't. Um, other than this this release, what's 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 uh, what's coming up? Ah, ha, ha. you're trying to me to to talk about new things. I want you to talk <laughs> about new things. Yes. <laughs> well, let me put it this way: we, I'm always working, always <laughs> blending, I always at least working in ten different blends at the same time. Okay. So uh, don't be surprised, something new will come out this year, or maybe a, 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 a light extension, or a different Vitola from, or, 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 from some of the existing uh, blends, or, you know, something completely new. Maybe it will not be under 15 or 2 cigars, but maybe it will be under some, 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 some other name. We'll see. But you know, it's very hard to get things you can have in life, and that's something part of my compromise to do so. So there might be some collaboration work coming. Mm -hmm. Is that how I'm supposed to interpret Joe's that? Joe's digging. He's digging. I'm hey. digging. I'm digging. I'm digging. Right. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just you, me, and Paul. Just tell us. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the thousands, 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 thousands of listeners. listeners. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So so I, so I I got a maybe. Is that is that is that what I got? Maybe it's, it, I think it's fair enough. All right, Paul. You want to dig some more? Go ahead. No, I'm not big on the the dig. I, I let you don't I like let, the dig. No, I, I let you know. Okay, I like the dig. That's my thing, I guess. You know, for sure, for sure. Um, emerald. Is that the green one? Ooh. Yes, sir. All right. All right. I'm doing this. I, yeah, I'm doing this blind off 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 a of memory, so I'm 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 pretty familiar with the blend, uh, with the brand. Take us through. Take us through that because that I like to pair with uh, coffee for sure in the morning. Oh well. I'm glad you got you find it that way because I blend it to be my start of the day cigar. I call it my breakfast cigar. Okay. So of course I love uh, a lot uh, more uh, cappuccino. So in the morning normally I always grab my, my cappuccino and in, in, in with my 152 Amara. I like to change the, uh, the, the the size the vitola so of the Amara. But that it was blend for that is the first cigar of the day and when you like at to, to breakfast or even before the breakfast some people like to do that you know grab a, a, a good a cigar with coffee and you like mm, let, let the day begin yes and that was the idea from from, from dublin yep when i worked in the cigar shop that was my uh sunday morning smoke mm -hmm. and enrique <laughs> you also said that you've had success pairing that with a bloody mary and i said it with all seriousness like that is one of the most difficult cocktails to pair well, with a cigar, 
Uh, and I, you yeah. said you had a great experience with the emeralds. So I gotta, I gotta get back to trying that. I don't think I smoke yes. emeralds first thing in the morning. I also gotta do that as well. I gotta, I gotta get some more and, and try them first thing in the morning. And yeah. don't, don't get me wrong, we got that by mistake. Actually, mm. it was at PCPR uh, was it maybe five years ago, six or seven years ago, six years ago, I guess. Uh, and, and I need a bloody marriage. Sample is that. It's because I'm not going to make the details. And somebody, and I was smoking a 152 emerald. Someone gave me a bloody Mary, And I'm like, wow, this looks very well. I love it. Mm. Especially that emerald Lancero with a bloody Mary. Oh. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. I love it. We'll have to do that on the show. We'll have to do some Bloody Marys. I think we should do that soon. Yeah, we should. <laughs> we should. Now I got Am everyone I craving a Bloody Mary. Too? Uh, excuse me? Am I getting my Bloody Mary too? You want to come down? It, yeah, it's going to gonna snow tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to snow uh, a lot tomorrow. Might be tough to get here in the studio. studio. Chicken that one, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Are you uh, going to visit the Northeast anytime of soon? Course. Anytime soon? Uh, Yes, we are actually planning for that maybe next month or next month or month or two months. Uh, we're going back, going to be around that area. I don't know exactly where to. We're going to be. We're still working with accounts to see that uh, uh, where we're going to do events and, and make all the logistics for it. Uh, but yes, we always always like to going up north as long as the snow goes. Yeah, wait, wait, wait a couple there, months. Like going up there. Definitely <laughs> wait a couple of months. Yeah. Well, you know my email, so make sure where, wherever you're going to land. Uh, here yeah, in the northeast, by. you know, you definitely yeah, should should stop by the studio. Yes, with my Bloody Mary, and we'll have some Bloody Marys and the fifteen oh two Emerald Lanceros. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So there's nothing new. There's nothing. There's nothing you're I can. Still, you're back to digging. I'm, all right, I'm not gonna dig yes. anymore. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm you not, guys I'm, threw I'm, my back. Uh, I'm you're gonna, gonna, you're <laughs> gonna have to wait. I was going to reword it. I was going to say, what are the goals you're working yeah. on? <laughs> I think your digging's done. What did you do before uh, you got into cigars? I was working in different uh, multinational companies, working in consulting, mm -hmm. uh, business strategy, I was uh, doing my, my, my specialty. And I know them let me smoke in my office. So I decided, you know, oh, you know, screw all of this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the cigar industry and smoke anywhere I want to, everywhere I want to. Yeah, right. I got married and moved to Miami. I can smoke anywhere. Now you're yeah. in my house. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. That's hilarious. Five one. Isn't, yeah, I miss, I miss the glory days myself. Yeah. You know? oh, yeah. <laughs> For sure. For sure. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. You have a question? I, I, I was just, you know, uh, with your, your background in business strategy, I was just wondering your thoughts, Enrique. And it's not, I haven't fully like formed the question in my head, but. Now, as I look at different industries and the business strategy around them, cigars is very much, now some people call it, a, you know, like a lifestyle brand or a lifestyle thing. And that like immediately gets thrown out by investors. When anyone starts off their pitch right with, I want to start like a lifestyle brand, uh, that's a hard thing. But cigars are very much a, a luxury item. And I've, it's a smaller, I, you know, market segment, uh, probably a little more higher price tag. So I, I, what are some like, like tips if you've got in any industry, really, like a kind of a luxury or, or niche thing that you're trying to sell uh, that people are going to pay a higher price tag for, have a much lower volume? Like what are some of your strategies that you employ for that? I also feel like 1502 is a very much a, more of a luxury thing, especially with the XO brand being so, so limited and I think very special cigar to smoke. That's a very niche thing. So what, what are the strategies around that? Well, first of all, you have to understand being a, a boutique company like myself, uh, first of all, 15 to cigars is not for everybody. You, and that's, the sooner you understand that yeah. is, is, the, is the most important part of it. Uh, because uh, and I'm not saying just to be cocky about it, because there's a lot of flavor profiles and they might not suit very well for, for your palate. And that's understandable. Uh, same goes with, 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 the, with the, uh, uh, B2, B2B, business to business, the retailers. Mm -hmm. The certain retailers in which their policies, uh, they don't work very well with our policies. And if there's no match, there's no reason to do business. Mm. Simple, simple as it is. So always find your market. Find, it doesn't matter if it's a niche, doesn't matter if it's a small market or, 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 or big market, focus there. And always, always, no doubt, focus in quality. That's it. Always quality versus quantity. Never, uh, never doubt that part. Because in, in, as a boutique company, we prepare a, 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 a skin every day. Every time we do a production, if the production doesn't go well, most likely it's going to cost our company. And there you go. Because I'm a bye-bye. Mm -hmm. 
uh, seven, eight, ten years of work, just someone throw it right outside the door. So we always have to be very careful and every time a production has to be the best it is. I always tell in the factory, this has to be the best one. Like, well, you told me the last year, exactly. And I'll tell you that next year too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it, it's true though when we talk about business strategy, uh, the, the, one of the foundations certainly is you got to have a fantastic product uh, and, and keep it consistent. Uh, and, and that's, you know, it goes without yes. saying. The other things you, are things you can work on but you got you got to start with that really great uh, product. Indeed, indeed. Uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a, a, a united of everything. Not only the product itself, uh, the brand, uh, the packaging, uh, the image around it. It all has to be aligned in one to be able to to be successful. I think a lot of great blends, but they're missing a lot of everything else. Uh, and 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 it's that uh, sometimes when you look at next year and they're not around anymore. And and and, I, and then I see. The opposite. I see a, a, a great packaging, great this, but not as much as a great blend. Right. But they had the, the financial resources to push it and, and, and create bring awareness. I'm like, okay, well, it is what it is. You always have to find a and, and to able to create a, a strategy. You always have to know your your your, your weakness and know your, your your strongest part. And how can you uh, put those aligned in which you can focus to the right market and do it something great. And being more the arti- artistic part, of course, is uh, when you blend, hopefully, when I blend, I've always blend for myself, but hopefully you get to people to actually enjoy uh, what, what you have created. Mm-hmm. What do you like to smoke besides 1502? Oh, I like to smoke a- a- everybody's cigars. That's no doubt. You don't have a go-to uh, or anything like that? I don't have a, a, a specific blend or brand in my house in which I always keep consistent in there. Mm-hmm. I like that, that type of person uh, when I go to the uh, to a cigar shop uh, I like to see what's new uh, some uh, uh, I know that they have my my, 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 my my flavor profile I'll go draw and put I'll put in my humor so I'm not bought most, or I'm gonna buy one box of this one and that's it I'm, I prefer to buy 20 cigars or different ones and, and, and mix it up all together and the way do the different di- different alternative mm-hmm. of, of, in, in profile so I don't have one specific brain in which I always keep in my house you and I Besides have, or two, of course. Sure, sure. You and I have a lot of similar uh, qualities, including the animation. Mm-hmm. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Can you picture him and I on the set? We have to have I drinks can. like put yes. in front of us because yes. they'd be spilling. We'll Although we'd be both talking with our hands, <laughs> it'd be Bloody Marys all over the floor. <laughs> <for sure. laughs> you know, that's why you have to drink fast. Uh, yeah, yeah, drink, drink fast and drink often. You know, <laughs> definitely, definitely. I like, yeah. I like that way you think. Yeah, why not? Too often. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be your next slogan for your new cigar that we're gonna, with that, uh, that you're going to launch. Drink mm. fast and drink often. Smoke fast. And, well, you don't necessarily <laughs> smoke fast, I guess. I guess it doesn't really translate to smoking. That's awesome. <laughs> That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Well, Enrique, thank you very much for appearing on the Stow Geek Show again. Uh, wish you the best of luck. Yes, uh, thank you. At IPCPR. We hope to see you up here uh, in New England. Uh, maybe visit the studio. That'd be fantastic. Looking forward, guys. I appreciate. Thank you for for giving me a lot of time and in, in, in your beautiful show. I was looking forward to come back, and definitely we have to make it happen. Go, I have to go over there, and you guys have to take care of all the blind areas. I will take care of the other fifteen two MRs, and we can do something right there. Sounds and, like a plan, and guys. Remember, it's not a cigar; it's a fifteen or two. <laughs> I like it. I like it. (laughs) Thank you so much. uh, And thank you, everyone, for listening and watching this episode of the Stogie Geek Show. See everyone next time.